see what exactly mean by the third type of constant that is character constant. Whenever we have an input provided by the user, it can be numeric or it can be alpha numeric also or it can be just a center set of characters. Now, let me put some questions and try to collect the answer and verify that answer as of type integer or float. For example, if I ask your age, your age seems to be a numeric value which is a integer value. If I ask your house number, that will be again a complete number which will be an integer value. If I have say a floor number or a floor value, again that will be integer value. But if I ask your say character value as an input, which says that gender, if rather than saying male and female, let's say M for male and F for female. So here the input will not be number, the input will be a character. If asked whether you want to continue or stop, so you can say Y for S and N for no. Here the input never seems to be a numeric value, but it seems to be an alphabet. Such single characters, we call them as character constant. Now let's see what exactly mean by a character constant. The formal definition of a character constant says that a single character enclosed in two closing single quotes. Let's put these single quotes, which is said to be a character constant. Whenever we want to put the input as a character format, rule says that it should be one single character and it should be always in a quotes. For example, if I write A, yes, very much valid constant, but C will never identify this as a character constant until unless I enclose it within two closing single quotes. If I have a lowercase alphabet, say A, yes, this is also a valid constant. And moreover, we don't have anything called as opening quote on the keyboard. We have only one character as a closing quote in this, in the, on the keyboard. Not as that, there has to be only an alphabet. You can even have a special character. For example, I can have plus. I can have asterisk. So whenever we have a single character, whether it's an alphabet or a special character enclosed within quotes, we call that as a character constant. Now, how much space does a character constant occupy? The character constant will occupy one byte of memory, which means that will take eight bits of memory. In this, if I write one, you will identify this as an integer constant. Whereas, if I quote this within a single quotes, we call this as a character one. So, question comes, how exactly the numbers are stored in the memory? How exactly the alphabets are stored in the memory? Suppose if I have a binary value, say 5. Now, this will be stored as a set of 1s and zeros as 1, 0, 1. Now, 5 is an integer constant, which means that it has to be 16 bit, but I have only 3 bits. So, hence what I'll do is, I'll add up another additional zeros, which are 13 in quantity, and then I'll write this number. Now, this is the actual representation of 5 in the memory. The binary representation of 5 goes, this is the binary, and this is the C representation of 5 as 2 bytes. But when I write A, how exactly this number is converted? We can't convert a character directly to binary. For that, what we need to remember is, we need to remember the ASCII values associated with these numbers. The ASCII value says, capital A as 65. A S C I I, which stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Let me revise it. American Standard Code for Information Interchange. These people, they have provided values for every number. These numbers can be used to convert the given character to binary. We have total 256 characters of which the first ASCA value is referred as 0 and the last ASCA value is referred as 255. 
So question comes, should I remember every ASCII value for my program? No, not necessary. We can remember only those ASCII values which we generally regularly use in our practice, using our programs or during our practice sessions. So I can have these ASCII values for my reference. Capital A stored as 65, small a stored as 97. I can have again a digit called as 0 stored as 48, a digit 1 stored as 49. I can have all these contents mentioned. So I can use these values for converting these numbers into binary. So to summarize this, we can say a constant as a character constant if it contains a single character which you can observe at this place enclosed within single quotes. We can have alphabets, we can have digits, we can have special characters. The next question which we raised was how these constants are stored in memory. Now the rule says that the constants should be always stored in binary format. When I say binary, it will be in terms of ones and zeros itself. So we have converted this phi to integer number as 101, but the actual representation goes as 16 bits. The numbers which we use for alphabets, we call them as ASCII codes or ASCII values. There are total 256 ASCII values. The first ASCII value starts with 0 and the 256th ASCII value ends with 255 value. Every number which we say is going to be associated with a value. Now, there are some exception characters which might be said as character constants, but they have multiple characters. Let's look at those characters as escape sequences or backslash sequences. There are some special sequences. For example, suppose if I write character as a, b, this is invalid because it contains multiple characters. If I write something called as a slash followed by n within quotes, even though I have two characters, but still it will be called as a valid character constant. So there are some special sequences which starts with a backslash character and has got multiple characters, but still they will be represented as single quotes. We call them as escape sequences or backslash sequences. What these escape sequences are meant for? Basically, the escape sequences are meant for printing some non-printable characters or to perform some special task. This slash n in C language is said to be a new line character. We have slash a as a bell or a beep which is associated. We have slash t which is again quoted in single quotes. We call this as a horizontal tab. We have slash v as vertical tab. We have slash 0 as a null character. Now, these sequences which I have listed out, they might contain multiple characters, but still they will be called as valid character constant because they are going to represent a task associated. For example, slash n gets you the control on the next line. Slash a gives you a small bell or a beep. Slash t takes the control horizontally by multiple spaces. Slash v takes the control vertically by multiple spaces. Slash 0 is said to be a null character which is used with arrays. Do we have escape sequences? Yes, we have some more escape sequences. We'll learn about those escape sequences in the next session. Yes, we do have some more escape sequences. Now, the first set of escape sequences which we have said are for performing a task. I have listed slash n, slash a, slash t, slash b, slash 0. There are some more escape sequences which are used to print some non-printable characters. For example, we have slash slash. When I have slash slash, this prints one backslash. When I have slash double quotes, we call this 
to print a double quote. We have slash single quote to print a single quote. So there are some non-printable characters in C language which can be printed using these escape sequences. Now let's look at the examples where these escape sequences will be used. If I had to go ahead for displaying some values, suppose if I ask you to display the output in C language as say A, B, C. To do this task, what I'll do is I'll use a instruction called as printf. And within this printf, I'm supposed to put a double quote and what need to appear on the screen will be said in this double quotes. I wish to print ABC on the screen, hence I'll put a double quotes as ABC and then I'll say a semicolon. So the output which is produced by this instruction is ABC. Basically, how a printf works? A printf works by printing all the characters as it is from the first double quote till the last double quote. Now these double quotes are always closing double quotes. Now when you type them onto your system, you'll find two straight lines, but you have supposed to read them as double quotes itself. Now, what if, if I had to print, say, A, double quotes, B, and then C. If I write a printf of this sort, we know that to print this output, we need to use printf. But at the first double quotes, after that, I'll print A, and then I wish to say a double quote, and then I wish to say B, and then I have to print C, and then a double quote for the end of this printf. Now, if I try this, this will be an error. Why? Why this will be an error? Let's list out this. Suppose if I use double quotes at this place, this is said to be the beginning of printf. The very next double quotes which appear at this place is said to be the end of this particular printf. So it presumes this has begin and this has end. So the next all will be discarded. And we know that in a printf, after double quotes, you are not supposed to place one more double quotes. There has to be only one set of double quotes. Now, I have to make this printf to say that this double quote should be treated as the begin of printf. The next double quote is not to begin, but it has to be printed on the screen. And this has to be treated as the end of this particular printf. To say this as a double quote which is supposed to be printed, what I'll do is I'll use a slash at this place. Now let's check how this will produce the output which I have described. So we know that a double quote till the next double quote, your printer will print as it is. So first it prints a double quote, then it finds A, hence A is generated on the screen. Then it finds a slash, which means that it is not supposed to print slash, but take the next character and try to accumulate a meaning for this particular double quotes. So says slash double quotes prints one double quote. So slash double quote is now combined and a meaning is traced out as to print a double quote, hence a double quote is printed. Then it prints B on the screen, then it prints C on the screen, and the last double quote is now identified as end of this. Now, let's look at one more example. Suppose if I ask you to generate output as A, followed by B on the next line, followed by C on the next line, and then, put multiple spaces and then print D on the same line but separated by multiple spaces. Let's try to generate this particular output with only one printf. Remember, it is supposed to be only one printf, not multiple printf. Let me write printf because this is how we display the values. So I to print A, let's print A. Now I have to get a cursor on the next line. If I write one more printf, still the output appears on the same line. I had to get the control onto the next line using the same printf. For that, what I'll do is I'll use slash n. When I say slash n, n this slash, I know that it is not printed, but instead of that, it takes to the next character and tries to trace a meaning for slash n. What is the meaning for slash n? Get the cursor on the next line. So instead of printing slash n, the cursor rolls to the next line. Once the cursor rolls to the next line, print B. Yes, print B. After that, again the cursor need to be rolled down. So what need to be used? 
got right that it has to be slash n. So slash n will again get the control on the next line. And after that, print C. Yes, print C. But now, I am supposed to get the cursor horizontally for multiple spaces. If I have to move on to the horizontal spaces, in that case, I will say slash T and then followed by D. How many printf I used? I have used only one printf. You guessed it right. I have used only one printf, but I have made the output appear on three lines. Now, this is all because I would used escape sequences. Now, let's analyze these escape sequences one by one, one more time. So, slash n gets the cursor on the next line. After b, again a slash n gets the cursor on the next line. After c, I have slash t, move by multiple spaces. So, basically, your escape sequences are used to either print a non-printable character or to get the cursor on the next line or to perform a task. Let's look at one more example. Suppose if I wish to generate a forward by slash forward by one more slash and a double quote at this place. If I get this output, let's try to generate the output using one printf. Try this printf. What need to be printed first? A. Yes. Let's say a at this place. After that, I'm supposed to print a forward slash. As for the rules of C language, a forward slash is said to be a printable character use a forward slash. Then I am supposed to get a backslash. You got it right, double slash is supposed to be used because backslash cannot be printed. So hence use double slash. A double slash will get one slash and then I am supposed to put a double quote. Now is this double quote to be printed or to be said as end? Yes, it has to be printed hence I will say slash double quotes. And there has to be one more double quote which is supposed to be said as end of this particular print of instruction. So a double quote says begin, A says A printed, slash says slash printed, double slash says one slash printed, a slash double quotes prints a double quote. We got the output not using multiple printf but using a single printf. This is the practical use of your escape sequences which are used to either perform a task or print some non-printable characters. Thank you.